Hey guys and welcome to my new updated QBD guide for efficient kills. In this guide we'll be taking a look at the gear required, the perks that you want on your gear including the weapons and also ability rotations with a few demo kills. So make sure you watch the whole video so that you can get updated with the best methods. You just need to remember that practice does make perfect with anything you do on RuneScape including bossing so make sure that you do a lot of practice kills don't expect to get the rotations down perfectly straight away just practice 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 and eventually you will get to the stage where you can do a lot of QBD very efficiently with good kill times and without using any food so make sure you guys watch the whole video and enjoy okay so let's take a look at the gear and the inventory setup so I'm currently wearing full sirenic as you can see on the right hand side here you don't need full sirenic you can be using full pernix or full armadil but obviously sirenic is going to help you to do extra dps and it is definitely worth bringing because the cost compared to augmented pernix isn't actually too different so ideally make sure you save up for some uh, for some Sirenic. Now in terms of the extra items, so I'm using the Amulet of Souls with an ornament kit added on top for a couple of bonus stats. You don't need the ornament kit but the bonus stats do help a tiny bit. But in terms of Amulet of Souls, I definitely suggest you have this over any other necklace because the extra healing that you get from Soul Split is incredible. Uh, in terms of rings, there's three different rings you want to use. Luck of the Dwarves for looting will help you just gain a tiny bit of extra loot and also give you the chance of getting a HSR, which is the rarest drop in the game. I also have the Ring of Vigor for whenever I use Death Swiftness, which is at the start of every single kill. That's going to save you 10% adrenaline. You get this from Dungeoneering, so make sure you get that. And the best in slot ring, which is Asylum Surgeon ring, which you get from the Broken Home quest. So make sure you get yourself that as well. Uh, what else do I have? So I also have the Illuminated Book of Wisdom, just for a few bonus stats. In terms of boots, ideally Elite Ranger boots. Again, if you do have full Pernix or full Armadil, then obviously you'll be using Armadil boots or Pernix boots. But Elite Ranger boots are ever so slightly better, so make sure you get yourself some of them if you have some extra GP. The gloves, I suggest Nightmare Gauntlets just because it gives a really high ranged boost. The cape, it doesn't really matter too much. Ideally at least a 99 range cape um, or a kiln cape and then it goes max cape, comp cape. So one of those capes will be fine. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the Tyranin Quiver. This is just going to give you an extra prayer bonus um, and obviously just put your arrows inside of that. Now the inventory, I have the Enhanced Excalibur. This is used just for some healing. If you ever get really low on HP, you should only really use this if you go down to a 1k or 2 kill, uh, 2k and you use it at the start of a kill, never in the middle or at the end. I have my overload, so searing overloads, which is just a combination potion of super antifires and overloads. Obviously, if you can't make this combination potion, then just bring those two potions that I've just mentioned. Prayer potions to get your prayer points back, obviously. Um, I always bring a holy wrench with me. You don't have to, but it just say, it slows your prayer drain ever so slightly. Uh, dark bow, which is very, very good. I will be going over this during some of the demo kills later on, so make sure you're looking out for the dark bow, dark bow information. Dragonbane arrows, these are the most important thing. If you don't have Dragonbane arrows, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be getting efficient kills unless you're using a Seren God bow. So I definitely suggest you get yourself Dragonbane arrows. Um, if you really don't have the money, then you can use Superior Elite Void at QBD. It is very accurate, um, but you will be taking quite a bit of damage, so you may have to bring a few pieces of food here and there. You can use a Scrimshot of Cruelty. They are expensive to upkeep, though, so I wouldn't bother unless you're really struggling. And then in terms of Familiar, the best one to bring is the Steel Titan, with Steel of Legends scrolls. 
Okay, so make sure you bring that. That is going to help you with a tiny bit of extra damage. Now, in terms of perks for your gear, because perks will help you to do a lot more damage. So, on my weapons, on my Nox bow, I have Precise 4 with Equilibrium 2. Obviously, this is the best in slot perk for that. You can get away with Precise 5 or Precise 3 Equilibrium 2. And then I have Aftershock 3. On my armor, I then have Crackling 3 with Dragon Slayer on the same gizmo. You don't have to have this. You can have them on separate gizmos, but you will then lose the fourth gizmo slot, which I'll go over in just a second. You then want Biting 3. Again, that is quite an expensive perk, so you may just want to have Biting 2 if you don't quite have the money yet. But hopefully, once you've done loads of QBD, you can afford stuff like that. On my legs, I then have Impatient 3. Definitely want that, um, just because it's going to gain you some extra adrenaline. And then the fourth perk, so this is the one where if you haven't got Crackling and Dragon Slayer on the same gizmo you can then just have crackling on one gizmo and then your fourth gizmo slot you have dragon slayer if you do have them on the same then you can just have your fourth perk as crystal shield three which is going to save you a tiny bit of hp during kills it doesn't proc too much but it is slightly useful um, and then on my dark bow i have planted feet which is going to make your death swiftness last a lot longer so definitely worth using also, Aftershock 1 with it. I believe for this you need uh, three Cyware components and two Ilyu Yankin components in order to get this combination. Um, it is reasonably expensive, but it's definitely worth it. And then on the second one, I have Invigorating 3 because your Dark Bow is going to be whenever you use an auto attack, you gain extra adrenaline. And your Dark Bows are whenever. Basically, whenever you use auto attacks at QBD, you want your dark bow on because you shoot out two arrows instead of one. So that's all of the gear and the inventory setup. We'll now move on to some demo kills so you guys can really watch and learn how it's done. Okay, so before we get into the demo kills, let me just very quickly talk about the different auras that you can use. So you have Vampirism, which is going to gain you some extra HP, so that's quite useful for when you're first starting off. You have Penance, which will stop you, or, or basically it will stop you using prayer points, because whenever you take damage, you'll be gaining prayer points back, so you don't need to bring any prayer potions with you. Uh, you can use Dark Magic for a tiny bit of extra deeps. Supreme Sharpshooter, if you don't quite have 100% accuracy, so I suggest using this. If you're on sort of armadillo gear and it's not fully perked up, definitely worth using this one. Uh, we have Supreme Reverence, which is going to slow your, uh, your prayer drain slightly and increase the amount of prayer points from prayer potions or super restore potions. So this will save you a tiny bit of money. And then we have Reckless Aura, which is going to give you big deeps, but just remember that you will be taking extra damage as well. So now that we've gone over that, before we get into the kill, let me just quickly explain the ability rotation that you'll want to use. And then as I'm doing the kills, hopefully it makes a bit more sense as well. So on P1, you'll be using your Death Swiftness with Ring of Vigor on. And then once you've used that, you'll switch to your Asylum Surgeon Ring and just build up adrenaline as much as possible on your Phase 1. On Phase 2, you'll be using Rapid Fire and then any extra damage that you need to do you can just use basic abilities ideally corruption shot and just dazing shot p3 will be snapshot into either tendrils if you're confident with your kills or bombardment if you're not quite so confident the reason being there is that tendrils does damage to yourself um, so you might not want to be using that straight away but once you've done a few kills and you st start getting to the rotation hopefully you can use tendrils uh, pretty much straight away and then on p4 you'll be using rapid fire again because it should be off cooldown by then and that will be the kill done the most important thing really for efficient kills is making sure that you finish the kill on a hundred percent adrenaline so always be watching your adrenaline bar now before we get into the kill we need a hundred percent adrenaline 
So I'm going to very quickly gain all of my adrenaline from grot worms here. Um, just because we need to be using death swiftness at the start of every single kill. So gain your adrenaline. Make sure you're 100%. Um, make sure that you kill the grot worm you're on as well. If you don't kill the grot worm, your death swiftness is going to bug out. So make sure you do kill it. Now we're going to equip my dark bow and my ring of vigor. Because again, the ring of vigor is going to save you 10% adrenaline. So let's get into the kill. Now watch where I place my death swiftness. This is where you want to be placing it every single time. So just here on this little circle. So at 14 seconds, I'm going to use resonance. And obviously use your overload, so 14. Use my death swiftness. Keep the dark bow on. Attack once with an ability. Switch to an ox bow. And now we're just building adrenaline. So we build up adrenaline using those basics. I've used snipe. I've used corruption shot. Now P2, we use rapid fire. To get to the second artifact, we're going to surge. So watch my surge carefully here. Again, we didn't quite do enough damage. So we're just going to finish it off with some basics. We surge here. Got my dark bow on. Dark bow attack with an ability. Now snapshot. And then we, we're going to use bombardment this time. Let's use bombardment. Okay, now we're going to run to the artifact. Use a defensive here. Dark bow into an auto. And now we just have my rapid fire again. I will do a few demo kills. You can tank this. You should be get, um, gaining enough HP to just tank everything here. So you see I'm really low. Um, which is actually going to be good. Because now I can show you how to use Excalibur. So we're just going to loot. Make sure you equip your LOTD. Loot here. Use a defensive so you're not losing adrenaline. And then just right click quick start. Okay, so watch again. So we're going to have my character here. We always use Death Swiftness in the same position. We hold our adrenaline by using defensives. Remember at 14 seconds you're going to use Resonance. So it's Resonance, Death Swiftness. And now we attack. Switch to my bow, my Nox bow. And now we deeps. You realize at the start of the kill we only had 2k HP. We're now already at above 4k. Now we use rapid fire again. Just building up adrenaline after that. We're going to surge to the artifact here. We're going to come back. Dark bow, auto and an ability into our snapshot and bombardment. Obviously I was trying to dodge the firewalls as well there. We're going to use a defensive here just to gain a bit more adrenaline. Dark bow into Nox bow with rapid fire. Remember, whenever you auto attack, you want to be using your dark bow. And also, I'm always watching my adrenaline bar here so that I'm always 100% at the end of a kill. If you're not quite at 100%, you can use defensives. You can use up to three defensives to gain more adrenaline. So just going to loot again. I'll show you two more kills. Going to use a defensive in here in the loot room. So that we don't lose our adrenaline as we get into the next kill. Equip the ring of vigor. Stand here again for our death swiftness. What are we going to use at 14 seconds? Remember resonance because this will occasionally heal you at the start of a kill. So we res. Death swiftness. Make sure you switch to your... Asylum Surgeon Ring as well. So again, we're Snipe and Corruption Shot out. And we just keep building. P2 is Rapid Fire. Hopefully you guys get the idea after watching a few kills. You get the, uh, get the rotation down a bit more. We come back in. Dark Bow. Switch to the Nox Bow. And then we go into our two abilities. Let's use Tendrils on the next kill. Okay, I've got my Dark Bow back on. Dark Bow Auto. Switch to my Nox Bow. And then we just use Rapid Fire. As you can see, I've got my Nox Bow on my number one key here. I do have my uh, Dark Bow bound to a keybind on my mouse. Um, so obviously if you've got 
a mouse where you can where you can keybind stuff to it, then do that. If not, you're going to have to find a keybind that works for you uh, to equip your dark bow. Okay, I'll just do one more kill. This time, let's use tendrils on P3, just so you guys can see how that's working. It does do a bit more damage than um, than bombardment, so. But again, you do take a bit of damage from it. So at 14 seconds, again, we're going to use resonance just in case QBD decides to auto us. Death Swiftness, switch rings. There we go. I'm going to move to the artifact early. Just building adrenaline. Into the rapid fire. There we are. We surge here. Switch to my dark bow. Get my dark bow auto out. We use tendrils this time. Look at the damage done. 7k on that tendrils. That's beautiful. And now I'm really watching my adrenaline bar here. So because I was a bit lower, I decided just to hold off on my rapid fire just for a couple of seconds. So look, we're at 83%. I'm going to use one, two, three abilities. Oh, I got an impatient prop, but you can use three abilities. Okay, so there's the demo kills done. Okay, so I do suggest you watch over those kills a few times just to pick up on all the bits of information that I'm saying. The most important things would be, one, death swiftness at the start of every kill. Two, is dark bow auto attack whenever you use any auto attack. So that's going to be at the start of P1, P3, and P4. Not P2 because you'll be using rapid fire straight away. The other key things is just the ability rotation. So P1, you'll be building a drone. P2 will be rapid fire. P3, snapshot and then tendrils or bombardment. P4, rapid fire and making sure you finish off a kill with 100% adrenaline. Make sure you also equip your LOTD for, the, uh, for when you loot. I actually did forget on the fourth kill that I did. But that's just because I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I was more focused on making sure that I get all the information for you guys. So make sure you do equip that LOTD just in case you get the HSR just like I did. Okay guys, that's all we need to talk about for today's guide. If it does help you, then make sure you leave a like. If you have any comments or suggestions, then please feel free to comment below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. I really hope that this guide has helped you to gain efficient QBD kills. Make sure you practice it lots because practice is going to help you. If you just assume you're going to get zero food kills straight away, then it's probably not going to happen. So make sure you do practice lots. Try and get the ability rotation down um, that I've talked about lots already. Um, once you can master the ability rotation and where to stand, then your kills should be really efficient. So thank you guys for watching. I will also be posting an advanced QBD guide today. So if you want to be seeing that, then look out for that as well on my channel. And I am going to leave you guys with the video of me getting a HSR. It happened on stream and this is my reaction. I'm not gonna lie, accuracy is so shit off reckless. It definitely is. <gasps> no! I, fu I fucking got a HSR. Oh my fucking god.